वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला एम डॉक्टर विशाल जाधव असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी तिलक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ टुडे वी गोइंग टू लुक एट अ मॉड्यूल टर्म्ड रिलीजन एंड सोसाइटी व्हिच कम्स अंडर द पेपर क्लासिकल सोशोलॉजिकल थियोरी व्हाट इज रिलीजन व्हाई इज द सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो इंपॉर्टेंट for Durkheim who is a structural functionalist social cohesion is one of the ends of sociological study for him religion is something that binds people binds individuals through morals through a normative framework into a cohesive whole which he calls as collective effervescence for him religion has changed over time since what it was in primitive times to what it is in modern times this particular module will try and assess what kind of religion will prevail in modern times and how durkheim tries to assess the function and effectiveness of this kind of institution called religion in modernity Durkheim was witness to a drastic social change occurring in Europe and his works deal with this change for Durkheim it is very important to examine the cohesive forces that held society together this was an era in western europe and in france where the processes of rapid industrialization and urbanization were leading to drastic changes in the given societal structure impersonalization of human interaction social conflicts urban poverty under and over employment and excessive bureaucratization led him to believe that the society was undergoing change at a pace that could destroy the very cohesive forces that held the social system together this drastic change he argued had an impact not only on collective societal institutions but also individuals with the inauguration of a modern society rationality and reason ruled and this system had little to no place for religion he sought to assess the importance of religion in the organization of normative order which he thought was necessary for society to function and for it to remain a cohesive unit the industrial economy posed new challenges for collective consciousness to emerge leading thereby to new ways of coping with issues related to interpersonal relationships and collective ways of life turkheim posed these sets of questions what would be the role of erstwhile religions in modern societies would they undergo a transformation would a new religion emerge would there be a form and counter of this religion what would be the ideology of this new religion durkheim contends that society is sui generis a reality that is society has a unique reality which is irreducible to adding up its component units and has come about due to historical and cultural factors this phenomena occurs when individual consciences merge through collective effervescence and a completely new and larger whole is formed that is society however society cannot be simply replicated by forming groups of individuals the logic of how society is formed and reproduces itself does not solely depend on the constituent units or that is individuals the demographic and material conditions together with technology lead to disparate levels of human interaction these interactions in turn lead to the formation of dynamic density durkheim's work the elementary forms of religious life he states society can neither create itself nor recreate itself without at the same time creating an ideal this creation is not a sort of super erogation for it by which it could complete itself being already formed it is the act by which it is periodically made and remade the ideal society is not outside of the real society it is a part of it for a society is not made up merely of the mass of individuals who compose it the ground which they occupy the things which they use in the movements which they perform but above all is the idea which is to form itself in this way he places more importance on the larger whole that is society rather than the individual he has argued that 
It is a society that provides the basic infrastructure through which humans socialize and find meaning. Individuals for him are a secondary consideration. Therefore, for Durkheim, social norms that have emerged are external to the individual but binding on her. According to Durkheim, social change entails a drastic structural change in the division of labor. This shift from mechanical solidarity to organic solidarity leads to weakening of collective forms of social integration. Religion and societal cohesion. Durkheim argues that religion, that is Christianity itself, was in a state of transition. Modern European society was undergoing changes ushered in by the Industrial Revolution. The modern state, polity and economy relied on reason and rationality. The political economy was so structured that it atomized collectivities in the individuals who desired individual progress and achievements. With reason and science at the helm, there came a rejection to the normative order anchored in Christianity. Durkheim argued that religion played a pivotal role in integrating individuals into society. He believed that it was through religion that humans socialized and internalized the normative order. Without this integrative force, individuals would tend to move towards the state of normlessness or anomic state. It is this anomic state that is the cause of the incessantly recurrent conflicts and the multifarious disorders of which the economic world exhibits so sad a spectacle. That such anarchy is an unhealthy phenomena is quite evident since it runs counter to the aim of society which is to suppress or at least to moderate war among men. A form of activity which has assumed such a place in social life evidently cannot remain in this unruly state without resulting in the most profound disasters. His central question was how humans rise above this everyday profane world reflected by individuation and individual aspiration to a level that allows for collective functional behavior. Unlike most other sociologists of his time, he argued that religion was a major force to reckon with even in modern era as it generated an overarching moral order that allowed for modern secular processes to function. He asks whether reason and rationality, the hallmark of modernity, are antithetical to religion. As religion is based on myths and faith, would religion and its paraphernalia not lose science, which is anchored in empiricism and certainty? Durkheim concludes that even in this era of modernity, religion holds a special place and without it society would collapse. It was in this vein of thought that he concluded that society amongst the Protestants was higher than the, amongst the Catholics because the former had a lesser integrative set of practices as compared to the later. He argued that religion was a social fact that served several important social functions. He was not too concerned about the spiritual or the supernatural aspects of this social institution. For him, religion was an organized social entity and practice a supra-constructed order that enabled individuals to connect to the larger social realm. It was through religion that a certain value system emerged and this normative order foisted itself on individual and that she may not deviate from the norms of society. In this sense, religion is a social fact that is external to the individual and has a coercive effect on her agency. For Durkheim then, all religions across the world shared certain commonalities and these religious doctrines and practices were anchored in the sole objective, that is, to maintain social order. Religion in this sense was a social institution for Durkheim, whose functional role was to inculcate ideas of solidarity and social integrity. The normative frame of society for him was internalized by individuals through various systemic procedures and practices such as rituals, festivals, carnivals, assemblies, amongst others. Education had a special place for Durkheim, as it was through educational apparatus that the state or nation could inculcate and imbibe collectively agreed and shared moral values and ideals of society. Durkheim's critique of existing theories of religion, he believed that in order to explicate the functional aspects of religion, it would be simpler to examine primitive societies that possess less complex social orderings and interrelationships. Durkheim argued 
that modern European societies with their complex religious practices could obfuscate such an analysis. With this assumption, he argued that even the simplest of societies that practice primitive forms of religion had some inherent social functions inbuilt within them. It was with this objective in mind that he undertook a study of religious life amongst the aborigines of Australia. In his famous work, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, he sought to comprehend the functional aspect of the system of clan, moiety, endogamy, exogamy, kinship patterns together of the Arunta tribe. He relied on secondary data collected through anthropologists on this particular tribe found in Central Australia. In his quest for unearthing the functional need for organization and reproduction of religion, as was his basic assumption, Durkheim examined various existing explanations whose spectrum ranged from animism, naturism, and animatism to the idea of existence of God, monotheism, and polytheism. The early ethnographies on religion and various associated practices of exotic tribal societies examined religion as a way of life within the communities. It brought forth the importance of religion in all walks of life, including marriage, kinship, family, economy, polity, among others. However, the social anthropologists examined religion and its complex of rituals and ceremonies as exotic phenomena. They were more interested in examining religion as a supernatural phenomenon and practice. Durkheim, on the other hand, and quite contrary to them, was interested in comprehending how religion and its complex set of practices enabled societal cohesion and social control. He was not much impressed by the organization of the religious hierarchy and its paraphernalia, but by its ideology and its importance as a coercive social fact. Durkheim argued that both animism and animatism as theories are exotic in that they remain at the level of philosophy and do not in any way attempt to connect to the social. In this sense, then, religion denotes a system of faith that attempts to answer supernatural or scientifically unprovable phenomena. All that they do is to instill a sense of fear and a sense of divinity. Religion then represents an individual belief structure that offers possible answers or offers a worldview that science cannot address. These two perspectives do not offer much in comprehending the social as they remain esoteric theories and philosophies according to Durkheim. Totemism and the Sacred and Profane Durkheim argued that it would be difficult to study the functional aspects of religion in the advanced societies as these societies are highly specialized and fragmented. He thus chose to examine the primitive societies of Australia. He contends that totemism represents religion in its most elementary or simple form and claimed it to be the earliest form of religion. Durkheim defines totem as an object or artifact, either animate or inanimate, from which the group or the clan derives its common ancestry. A totem was generally an animal or a plant considered to have a particular symbolic significance for a social group. It is a sacred object that is venerated by the group and many kinds of taboos are associated with it. Eating or killing the totemic animal or plant is forbidden and as a sacred object, the totem is believed to have divine properties. Other plant and animals can be hunted or consumed as they are not divine. According to Durkheim, the totem is central to all social, political and economic cultural functions of the society. The totem represents their common descent and hence rules and regulations related to marriage, family, barter, leadership amongst many others have to be within the permissible social distance that is prescribed by the group. Rituals and ceremonies necessary must involve the use of the totem. Durkheim refers to an implicit belief in a mysterious or sacred force or principle that provides the rules and regulations, sanctions and institutes moral responsibilities on its members. Ordinary objects, whether a piece of wood, polished stone, plant or animal, once transfigured into a sacred emblem, it becomes to denote sacredness and power. He contends, since religious force is nothing other than the collective and anonymous force of the clan, and since this can be represented in the mind only in the form of the totem, the totemic emblem is like the visible body of the god. Durkheim argues 
that any object or artifact be itself is not sacred or profane. It is the collective decision of the society or community to deem it to be. Thus, any animate or inanimate plant, animal or object or even statues or idols of gods and goddesses become engendered or become sacred as it is through collective acceptance that it has become so. However, once it is declared to be sacred, taboos and sanctions are invented so as to protect the sacred. Powers are invested in the sacred and it is through the norms sanctioned by the sacred that the profane domains of society function. Using this analogy, Durkheim has argued that modern religions are similarly organized, wherein the most fundamental tenets of religion from, form the core without which the religion cannot survive. This forms the sacred domain of religion. The collective conscience that emerges from belief is the sacred. The profane is the everyday utilitarian life functions such as economy, democracy, education, among others. Durkheim argues that the substantial function of religion is the creation, reinforcement and maintenance of social solidarity. He argues that a religious phenomena emerges in any society when a separation is made between the sphere of profane and the sphere of the sacred. Discussing the importance of the sacred, Durkheim argues that the essence of totemism is the worship of an impersonal, anonymous force at once, immanent and transcendental. This anonymous, diffuse social force is superior to individuals and emanates from shared mental belief structures. According to Durkheim, the characteristics or common feature of the sacred across all world religions are as follows. Firstly, sacredness is superimposed. Nothing is sacred by itself and it's not intrinsic in nature. But whatever the collective deem as sacred comes to be sacred. Therefore, what is sacred for one community may not be the same for individuals from another community. Secondly, sacredness is also non-utilitarian in that it need not have a profit motive or utility objective. It needs to be of practical use to society or its institutions. Thirdly, sacredness is non-empirical cannot be gauged it is it is accepted through faith and collective recognition one cannot prove or disprove it fourthly sacred is not amenable to reason or rationality as it is an ambiguous entity therefore it is beyond doubt it is a belief and finally sacred is believed to have supernatural powers and therefore needs to be propitiated by doing so it is believed that the sacred reciprocates describing the totemic practices Durkheim suggests that members of the totem group refer to themselves and each other by a common name. This binds them together as if they are consanguineous or blood relatives. The totem worship rites compels them to recognize their duties and reminds them of the social functions and social prescriptions such as exogamy, obligation, reciprocal aid, participation in death and mourning, the totemic beliefs invoke certain taboos and prohibitions. In this way, totem becomes an emblem, a symbolic force that facilitates organization of group or community, solidarity, and through this symbolic power integrates various units within the community. Thus, according to Durkheim, ultimately religion has a very important social function. It grows out of collective effervescence. Belief in religion is belief in the normative order of society that allows for social control of individuals. Finally, the cult of the individuals. Durkheim argues that rapid industrialization, growth of political economy and urbanization has led to a high degree of diversification and high level of moral density. These multifarious social interactions anchored in contractual relationships and ambiguous social relations led Durkheim to argue that there needs to be some system to integrate these heterogeneous interests. He contends that erstwhile form of religion based on myths and superstition could no longer exert social control in modern times. And yet, religion is the only institution that has the capacity to appear a superordained social entity. In such a context, he suggests that religion needs to be now premised on a secular ideology that grew out of the collective effervescence of the Enlightenment and French Revolution, that is, the ideas of liberty, fraternity, equality and justice. He therefore suggests that modern democracies and states 
have set in new practices that promote human rights and humane practices. He further contends that the modern state can through a secular ideology organize a universal and all-encompassing normative orders that will function in a similar fashion as the religion did earlier. Thus, Durkheim believed he had solved the religious moral dilemma of modern society. If religion is nothing but indirect worship of society, then individuals need only express their religious feelings directly towards the sacred symbolization of society. The source and object of religion, Durkheim points, are the collective sacred belief structures. Durkheim contends that modern nation states, having democratic forms of government, allow for the formation of the cult of individual. Modern capitalism, which is premised on private property, free labor, individual and civil rights, justice and equality, which form the fundamental principles on which the cult of individual emerges. Thus, Durkheim was not so much in doubt as to whether religion would survive the onslaught of modern ideas, but he was more concerned about the nature of the transfigured religion that would take place of the erstwhile ones. For Durkheim, religion stimulates ideology which is expressed in terms of language. Thus, religion ideals, its values and essence, rituals and ceremonies are transmitted from one generation through various and organs of modern state, through nationalism, universal ideals of humanity. Durkheim extrapolates, the human person is considered sacred in the ritual sense of the world. It partakes of the transcendent majesty that churches of all time lend to their God. Whoever makes an attempt on a man's life, on a man's liberty, on a man's honor, inspires us in a feeling of horror analogous to that which the believer experiences when he sees his idol profaned. Such an ethic is not simply a hygienic discipline or a prudent economy of existence. It is religion in which man is at once the worshipper and the god. Durkheim contends that in modern societies, where modern states have large populations to manage, it becomes difficult to do so with an overarching, omnipresent ideology. This is so because that modernity advocates individual freedom and individual aspirations to flourish. This emphasis on self-actualization and means to end kind of rationality and ever demanding human nature could lead to chaos. This profane realm of utilitarian activities needs to be controlled by a supra-ideology. This is what religion has been doing in the past and will continue to do so in the future. Only the calm of religion transforms from time to time. Finally, Durkheim began his inquiry with the relevance of religion in modern Europe and to which he went back to understanding how religion was organized amongst the Arunta tribe. Finally, he proposes that modern society is based on a new religion that is the cult of individual. In this system, modern processes and practices of the state have allowed for a new moral order to emerge. This order is based on a unified system of beliefs, practices which are deemed to be sacred by citizens of the state. To conclude, we have seen Durkheim explains that in the primitive era of human history, for instance, when he looked at the tribe called Arunta in Australia, he describes how early humans practiced animatism, naturism or nature worship and even totemism. In these kinds of primitive societies where there are extremely informal relations where there is face to face recognition, which is a very cohesive kind of societies. Religion plays an important role through its rituals, through the whole idea of the sacred and the profane. Similarly, in modern times, new kinds of religion, which Durkheim calls as the cult of the individual. The whole idea of liberty, of freedom, of expression, of democracy, of civil rights is what Durkheim calls collectively as the cult of the individual, where society tends to be more individualistically based and each of its citizens have a shared normative kind of ideology 
which is based in individual freedom and this shared collective effervescence leads to the formation of the foundation of the cult of the individual.